It was a very lucky win. That is now two straight games where I've come away feeling like the Knicks have been very, very fortunate to get a win. Now, it is two. I understand that. They cannot continue to play, even in this series. I know they're up two games to none. The Knicks cannot beat the 76ers if they keep playing like this. I mean, let's, first of all, we, we, we got a sporting, a sporting gift. For, I mean, an all-timer. You know, in terms of the final minute, that was insane. All right, so... Here's what I think we need to do. Whether it's game three, whether it's game four, if, and I'm not convinced there will be, if there's a game five, oh, man. we need to be in the same room staring at the same TV because <laughs> I'm convinced that we're watching entirely different okay. series. I knew you were going to say that, so I was thinking about it. Oh, let, let's ask <laughs> some, We could ask some questions later on just to confirm that we were, in fact, watching the same game. Did you not think the Knicks were lucky last night? I think we define luck de- very differently. Listen, when the ball well, bounces is, off the yeah, front rim. Okay. And, you know, like, uh, but Alvin Houston was lucky off Understood. the front rim. And in. Understood. Uh, yeah, I mean, that was the, the lucky non, bounce. The non-foul call. Now, I will admit, here's here's my bottom line from mm. both the – I don't think either of these teams are good. I mean, I watched five minutes of the Nuggets-Lakers last night and said, that's a basketball game. Those are two good teams. Now, obviously, nobody cares about the Nuggets and Lakers, but watching the Knicks and Sixers, Sixers are more talented, yep. at least with the top. With like, the top two. Wait, by far, the best, even a hobble Joel Embiid and Tyrese Maxey, for me, are by far the best players on the court. However, the Sixers are a stupid basketball team, and they play with a, a not even a, not even a fraction of the heart and will that the Knicks play. But with. that's why the Knicks aren't lucky because the Knicks have found the way to to impose their will really all year on the 76ers. It's this is not like you know two games where the Knicks were mopped by the Sixers during the regular season. The Knicks are tougher. The Knicks are deeper. The Knicks are smarter. Uh, I think the Knicks are more opportunistic. And by the way, yeah, I think you can, can you maybe call foul in, in the corner with Maxi. Sure. But the way the game was officiated, there were a couple of times where the Sixers got away with a few things and we can nickel and dime all day. The bottom line is, you know, when you got to get a steal, Knicks got it. When you got to step up to the stripe and, and, and OG Adenobi did that, you have to hit two free throws, you did it. Rebound with Hartenstein. Oh, my God. I mean, Hartenstein was That's absolutely yeah. phenomenal. The Knicks multiple times ripped the ball. Like, this is the essence of toughness. Like, you're playing in the schoolyard. And you know the old adage is like you know you really play hard because if you don't if you don't win you're off the court maybe right. for an hour next group keeps going you're sitting there watching so you play with everything you got you know and the Knicks are playing a street ball smile uh, style right now not in terms of sloppiness but in terms of just rage and and controlled rage and focused rage and I listen Sal I don't think that they're lucky because we went through this yesterday you know going back to game one. They were plus 22 or plus mm-hmm. 23 in rebounds, so they punked them. Not not as much last night. It was close. But game one, so if people think that they were lucky in game one, I point to things that you can really control. You can't always control the ball going in the hole. You can't control effort. Knicks were plus 23 there. They were almost 50% from downtown. They committed fewer turnovers in game one than they averaged per night during the regular season. They took more free throws than the Sixers. That was game one. So I don't think that they were lucky in game one. In game two, they were only plus two in rebounds. They only had seven turnovers, which is insanely low for any standard regular or postseason. 83% from the stripe. They had five more steals. I thought they played better in game two than they did in game one. I I, I didn't. Well, I think. Me, I, personally. I, I hear you. Yeah. I, I mean, that, bits and pieces like that. I never think that this team is out of it. I love this team. So, and I love them. They are this is but this is who they've been. And you think it's sustainable. Oh, the Knicks are absolutely gonna win the series. Yeah, now see, sustainable I, for the series or sustainable like for just Milwaukee the series. Or, forget this about series, that. Knicks are yeah. tougher. Yeah. Knicks are a better basketball well, team. Well, They're the, a better team. Knicks being tougher, Knicks being deeper, Knicks playing with more passion and pride. Those are all things I'm going to give you. The reason why I don't believe it's sustainable is because In the NBA, superstars generally prevail. And the Sixers have two. Now, if Embiid is compromised further with injury, then obviously that, you know, that negates everything. But let's say even a hobbled Embiid right now with Maxi playing the way that he's playing, and and I just wish Maxi, for his own good, was a smarter player and, and had more care. Like if he played with passion and care and was smarter, 
He'd be all wet. I, I think Tyrese Maxey is phenomenal. Yeah, he is, God, but he, is but he does good. stupid things. He's chucking up shots. And he's got to get he, the weight room. He has the, pushed around well, a little bit. Well, yeah, the ball ripped from him from I, Deuce McBride. Hit I the mean, weight that, room. That play is symbolic of yeah. the series. Well, look at Deuce's shoulders and look yeah. at Maxey's. Well, who wanted it more? The if, I, if I ask you who's more talented, we could argue, but I would say certainly Embiid and Maxey are superior talent to the Knicks. Mm -hmm. But if you ask me who wants it more, I don't think, I think it's even close. Well, I might, even push, I might even push back on the – there's nothing to debate with the second part of Sal's statement. It's it's clear thus far, and really all season, this is not some you know deviation from who the Knicks were the first 82. This is the Knicks, right. which is why I think a lot of us had a lot of confidence and but couldn't wait for this thing to get going. But from the talent, just wanted, from the talent yeah. perspective, obviously Maxi and, and Embiid are, are two phenomenal players. They're top-heavy and better up top. I, but I think top to bottom, I actually think the Knicks are more talented. The players the Knicks have coming off the bench – I got a lot of love for Kyle Lowry. Tobias Harris been around for a long mm -hmm. time. Some of these other ancillary pieces, you know, Batum. Right. Like the Knicks guys coming off the bench are better. Once you get past Maxi and Embiid, Knicks are a better team. Yeah, but there's a big drop off. I know and, there is. And you, I do take issue. And I think I saw you tweet this last night. I went, like, and you just said it now again. <laughs> this is who the Knicks have been all year. Hundred percent. It's not though. What well, do you mean because of Brunson doing yes, more? I mean, but more that's from a, a big. I, I know what you're saying. Resilience and you know never. But, but ne now never it's quitting. now it's two games where Brunson has been. And I thought he was better last night, and obviously hit that big three, lucky three. Whatever. I don't know if he was better. He was eight for twenty nine. Yeah, He's almost twenty five percent of the field. I felt like he. I felt like he played a different game, trying to get other guys involved, maybe better facilitator. I just felt like Brunson was a little bit cleaner last night. But the offense again, not there. That's not who the Knicks were all year. They had the depth, yes, built around the star. And you could say, well, yeah, the Knicks are a better team by the definition team. I'm not necessarily going to disagree, but it's Maxi and Embiid far, far better than anybody else on the floor. Like, far better. Now, it hasn't worked for the Sixers through two games. If it continues like this, the Knicks will get beat in this series. And I, I actually agree with Joel Embiid, what he was saying, that the Sixers are in a spot. They should be up two games to none. Now, they're not. The Knicks are. I've seen plenty of series before, BT, where teams have come back to win four straight or winning in seven after being down 0-2. Mm -hmm. And until I want to see this Knicks team do it the way that they're doing. Now, I'd like to see Brunson get going and have leave no doubt. Mm. Brunson get go gets going. The Knicks might sweep That's them. A, or it's take a wrap. They get the broom like they did back in 89, if, whatever year that if was. If he doesn't, they're going to lose game three. Well, And if he doesn't, they're going to lose game four. And then they're going to be in a fight that they don't want to be in in a must win in game five with – superstars on the other team mm -hmm. and without their superstar playing at a superstar level. Even if they're in that kind of fight, I still trust that the Knicks will win that fight. I think that the deeper this series goes, that does not bode well for Joel Embiid. He's only played nine or so games. Now, he's he's phenomenal. And, you know, he had, what, 29 in game one, 30, he's clearly 35. Hobbled. Last night. He's hobbled. And here's the one thing that I want to say. I want to get to these calls. Obviously, Knicks fans are revved up. We'll get to them in a sec. I look at... Now, Brun Brunson's inefficiency is is eye-opening. It's it's borderline stunning. And you could tell, like, the, it, it's one thing to miss shots, but he's missing badly. Like, for, like either really short or really long off the back rim. Like, he's, he is errant. He is off. I get that. But one of the positive byproducts of the attention that the Sixers are giving to him is that other guys are open, including the paint, which is why the Knicks are getting more rebounds, more second chance opportunities, more, you know, more ways and more, um, you know, more avenues to extend the play. And when you extend the play, you have guys running around. Guess who's open? Boom, there's a mm. sniper. There's somebody in the corner. There's DiVincenzo top of the circle. There's OG in the corner. There's McBride. Like, I understand Optically, Maxi and Embiid are, you're right, far superior to what the Knicks have won to. Knicks are better, and there is no doubt about it. Right, and the only question is, do we think it's sustainable or not? 100%. If it, I, right, and I don't. That's where we disagree. I think at some point, the Sixers' stars are going to win out, and at some point, it's going to start with Game 3. Now, if Brunson gets going, that changes things. But if it continues like this, I don't think the Sixers, I think this series is far Far from over. BT and Sal on the fan. Our friends at Town Fair Tire remind you that at Town Fair Tire, you always get the guaranteed lowest price on name brand tires from Connecticut to Maine. Nobody beats Town Fair Tire. Nobody. Joe is in Brooklyn. What's up, Joe? Gentlemen, good morning. Um, two compliments first. Uh, you guys are the best. Must listen to radio every day. I listen to you. Thank and you. Sal, I absolutely love you on Baseball Night in New York. Keep it up. Appreciate um, it. Thank you. What's on your mind, Joe? The other, the other thing is I'm with uh, BT a little bit on this one. Uh, it, listen, I don't care how ugly it is. 
just win, baby. That just that was too good to be true last night. I was jumping off my chair, hmm. and I agree with both of you that you know um, Brunson's got to pick it up. But as long as they get that W, I I don't care. Just win, just win, Al Davis, just win, baby. Yeah, and, and thank, I'm sorry, Joe. Thank you for the call. We get that. BT off of that. Do you think if Brunson continues like that this series, forget about the rest of the postseason. If Brunson continues, what he's now done in two games, but the Knicks have been able to win with both games with their depth. Yep. You believe that they will win this series if Brunson doesn't get going? Yes. Okay. That's where we fundamentally disagree. I think that there, it's imperative that they get Brunson going, specifically on the road. And I'm not so sure he will. Like, after game one, it was like, all right, maybe a bad game, make some adjustments. Now it's two straight games where he's looked uncomfortable. At some point, he's too good not to have a breakout game, and you would think that that would at least get the Knicks to a third win in this series. But, man, with the Sixers' length and then going back home to their house. Oh, I'm I'm not – listen, I'm not even overlooking Philly. So the next series, I don't care yet. Um, I – I look at Brunson and this very well. There might not be an appreciable uptick in his performance. Sometimes, you know, you get in the batter's box. And, you know, say you're a lefty, you're facing a lefty. Hey, he just he's he's got to do. So he just no matter what you do, you're not touching him, or he's got to change up that just doesn't see. It doesn't fit your mm-hmm. eye. What the Sixers have to defend Brunson, I don't know if any other team in the NBA has. Quite frankly, they have the perfect combination of long bodies. That they have made his life. It's not just these two games. Right. Like no, they've, Jalen they've Brunson. Had his number. Yeah, I mean, it's it's well chronicled. Five, six games this year against Philly. He has not been Jalen Brunson. And they still win. And, but usually they thump Philly. Yeah, they even usually do. That's true. That's true. They usually do hammer them. It's taken almost two miracles. One miracle for sure. Yeah. And even game one was... Mm. Well, I mean... I, I look at it as the ball's going to bounce the other way. The whistle's going to go the other way. It, they, they're playing with fire. Now, by the way, this is how series go. Yeah. Right? Like, I mean. Uh, right. Okay. Well, I, we don't need like a prediction in, in Nixon five or whatever, but I thought it would go differently. I thought when I, when I felt like after watching the Sixers in the playing game, I said the Knicks are, this is a better matchup. I don't want Miami. I think the Knicks will beat mm-hmm. Philadelphia because I didn't think Philadelphia was that good. I knew the star power, but. I felt like they weren't going to be as deep of a team, as smart and clean, and they're not. But I also thought Brunson would be playing well, and the Knicks would, you know, at least be, give me some confidence in watching them and feel good about thumping them maybe in one game. Obviously, you're not going to win every game by, you know, a margin. But so far, they've been fortunate in my mind to get two. You can look at it two ways. Well, they've done this without Brunson. Wait till he ever gets going. Or, hey, I, I'm concerned about this team, and at some point, the whistle, the ball is not going to go their way. And they could find themselves 2-2 coming back home to a must-win situation for Game 5. And I would love for the Knicks to win that game. I would feel good about it. And listen, I said Sal yesterday, even, and this was before last yeah. night, and I did think Brunson would play much better last night. He didn't. Knicks won. I, I said, you know, hey, if Brunson does play poorly in Game 2, I'll be sitting on the radio saying I expect him to light it up in Game 3. Like, that's the, and if he messes, and he, if he's a complete, you know, zero in Game 3, I'll be on the air saying, <clears throat> excuse me, I was yelling a lot last yeah. night. Uh, I was. Uh, I would expect him to come out and remember that he's Jalen Brunson in game four. Like, no matter how many, every time the Knicks play, I will expect Jalen Brunson to, to be an absolute killer because that's who he is. And I think that the Knicks' greatest trait, you, you know, you could use a resiliency. I think that that's almost too easy. I think the Knicks' greatest trait this year is adaptability because when something goes wrong, there's always an eternal answer. Randall goes down, boom, you find a way to just win without him. And then OG goes down, things weren't pretty, you're trending toward the seven seed, you regenerate, you finish with the two seed. Brunson's not playing well, other guys step up. Like, I feel sad, I can't prove this, but yeah. I feel that when the Knicks get into moments that most teams' heartbeat goes up mm-hmm. and starts to race, the Knicks look around and say, We're, we got them right where we want them. This team doesn't flinch at all. I mean, they got stones of steel. Yeah, their toughness, their determination, their will, those are things that that are great to watch about this team. I just worry about the actual talent. Adam in South Jersey. What's up, Adam? Good morning, guys. How are we doing on the best show in New York today? What's up, Adam? What's up? So check it out, Sal. Before I say this, I'm going to say I love you, so don't get mad at me, all right? (laughs) Go ahead. Um, Because you guys know I love you. But, Sal, you know what you sound like right now? You sound like, (laughs) my superstar reads scoring. You play to win. The game. 
The Knicks are the scrappiest bunch of SOBs I've ever seen since the 90s. They do what it takes. It doesn't matter how it has to get done. It doesn't matter who has to do no, it. No, but it, you, you're sweat. right, Adam, but I don't believe it's sustainable. Like, it's great that they won two games. It takes four games to win a series. I don't know if you guys know this. It's best of seven, not best that, of three. Now, but let's give Philly their flowers. Okay, can we give Philly their flowers? They're a good defensive team, man. They're going to play good defense. They're going to yep. force the ball out of his hands because they are a damn well-coached defensive team. And I said this before the series, it's not going to come down to Brunson. It's going to come down to everyone else hitting shots. You said DiVincenzo wasn't going to hit shots. This one's not going to Well, guess what, Sal? They're going to hit shots. If they're going to come down hard on Brunson like that, other people have to score. And, and Adam, other real quick, hold on. Score. By the way, and thanks for the call, buddy. Like, DiVincenzo, all right, we all saw him stick the, stick the dagger, but... You know, just why? Remember the play? It was in the second half. It was it was fourth quarter ish, early, where he went right at Embiid's chest. Like Divincenzo's been doing this all year, and I'm getting tired of you know hearing the Knicks, this Knicks unit described as like the scrappy, almost as if they're overachieving. Because I don't, I'm not saying you're doing that, Sal. No, I'm not saying I, Adam was doing that either. Yeah. But I feel like the it's missing the mark because when when we describe a team that is scrappy and you know a little engine that could, what you're really saying is, well, they're not that talented, but they're finding a way to cut things um, to cut through and win some games. But I, I don't think that's applicable to this team. Number one, the Knicks have what four guys? Four who are forty percent from behind the arc. Four right. in the modern NBA. Think about the years the Knicks couldn't find one. They got four. They've got depth. They've got two amazing centers who combine for this incredible array of everything, basically. Like, you know, I mean, I, their I, offensive game. I know Hortenstein uh, hit some, hit I some mean, shots. He didn't miss not, a shot, but he missed no, one shot, Hortenstein, yeah, last night. Yeah, I'm saying, bounds, I know, the I know, defense, he, I know the he hit, passing, yeah, but, they're not, awesome. but they're not offensive players. No, but and, they, no, well, no, no, true, but the Knicks are a top 10 offensive efficiency team. Right. Like, that's what I mean. Like, I, I know, love the centers and the combination. I'm just saying they don't do everything. No, like, no, I, yeah. well, well, Hardenstein scores a little bit. No, right. they're not a shooting threes. Bit, what yes. I'm saying is, like, I think that people look at these Knicks and they say, yeah, all right, whatever. But the story has been written, you know, month by month where the Knicks score. The Knicks stop you. The Knicks rebound. And we know the Knicks don't quit. I mean, yeah, a little bit of luck with that, uh, you know, bouncy from the three, from the corner. I got it. But you create your own luck. And yeah. what the Knicks created last night, they kicked the door in and they took it. Yeah, and and now they have two more to go. Yep, no question. And, no question. And I don't Not believe. Be easy. Yeah, well, I don't believe they're going to do it based on the way you don't that think they're, they're going to win the series. I don't. I'm not talking sweep. You actually think? If, yeah. You think they're going to lose the I do. series? I do. I've seen now two games where they've been playing with fire. They're going to get burnt. They're going to lose game three. They're going to lose game four. Why can't then, they come out and just whack somebody? They, That's oh, another like you, you, know, that. you, can, you can mess around with fire and lose, or you can come out and just destroy somebody. That's on the table they, they as could. well. It could go. I'm just telling you my feel based off of watching it, and we'll get into more why because I do have a couple of questions and comparisons I want to – analogies we'll do yep. when we come back on the other side. Knicks obviously up two games to none, though. They've done the max so far. They've played two games. They've won both. They did what they had to do as they sent it back to Philadelphia. I just don't believe they could beat the Sixers if they keep playing this way.